yes. you're pushing back on everything that we're saying. So what well, we because you're trying to fire me, and I, I want to work at this company. First, I'm the CEO of this company. If I'm talking, don't interrupt. I've been trying to get to this point of working on Mr. Beast for a long time. Can I please have a second chance? This is Dog Pack 404, and this shit is not looking good. So for around the past three months, Dog Pack 404 has single-handedly collapsed the reputation of Mr. Beast, with his now three infamous exposure videos showcasing scummy practices, fake videos, illegal lotteries, and whatnot. Which, also not to mention, one of these videos was deleted pretty recently, and you'll see why. As within the past month, tons and tons of shit has been getting scraped up from the floors showing us that dog pack 404 might not be the trust and authority we thought he was and for a few weeks now i've actually been pretty aware of some of these allegations of dog pack intentionally lying however the real reason i never made a video on it is because i thought oh yeah he's lying about like half the stuff he's saying such as like the subscribe for a cookie thing i don't know why he was going after that so hard legit every other youtuber does that shit but when Saki cereal posted a whole video breaking down dog pack claims and I saw this two and a half correct claims I just had to see what the hell this was yes. you're pushing back on everything that we're saying so what well because you're trying to fire me and I, I want to work at this company so this was the clip I played at the beginning of the video where it is apparently dog pack 404 getting fired at the company and complaining his ass off he goes a bit more into it later but basically as dog pack 404 being a ex mr. beast employee lots of people are wondering even from the start well why the fuck did he get fired and it looked like we've got the answer to that if you had to describe the working conditions when dawson was working with you in ideation uh, with one word uh, what word would it be i would say it was depressing I, I felt like very uncomfortable working in the office with him he didn't seem to work too well with others okay it seemed like he had no respect for hoodie um he didn't take any of Hoodie's advice. It seemed like he didn't think he knew what Hoodie was doing. But yeah, Dawson definitely did, did not, not like respect. Hoodie. Yeah. yeah, did not like Hoodie, did not show him any respect, even though he was his superior. He's a person that is unlikable and unworkable as for his job, the ideations department. And you know what his idea was? Making 1,000 boob transplants. Are you fucking retarded? And he was trying to make off the joke that, oh, it will be respectful. But even if it is, you think YouTube's gonna allow I bought 1,000 boobies, milky, milky, milky. We also saw the quite unlikable side of him in the Ludwig interview, where he was trying to get Ludwig on his side and he couldn't help but just being unlikable. The evidence is no one is on the boat, Bozo. Why have we met? No, I just know that you're the guy who cheats in video games. Okay, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Like this is the way a literal toddler acts. Like you're supposed to get him on your side. Like you know how if somebody gets an idea in their head that they know it will hurt somebody or potentially hurt somebody enough to affect them? Hell no, this guy gets the first thing that comes to his head and there's no filter. Which also is basically correlated to him getting the first narrative that comes to his head and running with it until he dies. Such as the real first claim Soggy Serial managed to clear up him hiring a supposed offenders. Well, he explained that Delaware was once a store manager at Jimmy's local Best Buy with stores all over the US. I mean that when Jimmy was 19 and first started blowing up on YouTube, Jimmy realized he needed employees to improve his content. He went to his local Best Buy and asked its employees if they wanted to work for it. So in basic sense, goofball 19 year old Jimmy, who is now pumping millions upon millions of subscribers, goes to his local Best Buy to try to get some new employees and doesn't run any background checks on them and it just unfortunately turns out that he hired a sex offender. And again, like I mentioned at the start, the sex offender claim was something I was always very suspicious about. As I mean, yes, it could be a meme that they're just hiring Ava Chris Tysons into the company. They couldn't employ the great Dawson French, but could hire the supposed sex offender. But again, there's no upside for Mr. Beast for doing this, which is why I was extremely suspicious at the start and thinking, yes, it probably was an accident, as there are probably hundreds of people in the area who would love to work for Mr. Beast. Does Mr. Beast need to address this? Absolutely. Has Mr. Beast's silence on every social media about this situation, even deleting comments, been helping? Absolutely not. But again, the way Dog Pack has been known for twisting narratives has been frowned upon for a long time. So when you got this nasally inbred looking little bitch throwing a bunch of unproven allegations- Yeah, Ali Coca is celebrating his ass off right now. One dollar lawyer comes home with the crown. I can't. Fucking believe it. Oh, good. 
24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. And here we move on to the Jake Weddle section, and like the claim with this sex offender, I was extremely suspicious from the start, as Jake Weddle just seemed like the biggest crybaby on earth. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. Okay, it was hard to run a marathon. It was hard to be in a pitch white room and competing in this tough Mr. Beast challenge. You are getting $10,000 a day. For me, that is like the equivalent of 3 million YouTube views. Most people would eat the skins off their loved ones if they had a chance to make that much money. However, this is not actually related to his claim. As while Jake Guetta was speaking, he said that it was a supposed war crime. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. And not mentioning that it was a joke that a friend made. The same guy who did the war crime joke. And since they were trying to frame it as such, they were accusing Mr. Beast of an absolutely serious allegation. And I don't want to start forming biases just like we all did with Dog Pack. That us, we gave Dog Pack the full benefit of the doubt and the supposed quote unquote trust and authority. Yeah, bro, what the trust and authority? I can't trust no one no more. However, I want to get more into the interesting stuff, so I'll quickly recap some of the other points he'd end up making. He would end up disproving two of the illegal lotteries that Dog Pack claimed against him. Disprove the third video where Dog Pack spread false domestic violence accusations on James Warren, in which only after two months he'd end up privating the video, practically brainwashing three million people into thinking that James Warren is a bad guy. Some of the smaller claims that he'd end up making on the very first part of his video, such as number 58 apparently winking. Hey guys! Mr. 58, been a while since I've posted anything, but something's really been concerning me a little bit. Uh, I've been seeing things on the internet that have said I didn't wink in the Mr. Beast video 1 to 100. Um, I did wink. Even after admitting that he was playing it as if he had no insider information, proving that he was just lying for absolutely no reason, and tons and tons of more claims like that. However, Dog Pack would take his narrative chasing necessities onto a whole new level where Dog Pack would almost expose himself for downloading full on CP. Basically, around a month ago, Rosanna Pantino showcased a work chat with Dog Pack, which apparently Chris Tyson and Mr. Beast were involved in, but just within the first few minutes, he ends up completely slipping up. As when he saw Chris Tyson post something that he thought was the 13-year-old image of Ivanka Trump, Chris Tyson even thinking that it was the 13-year-old version of Ivanka Trump, showing that Ava Chris Tyson is more disgusting than he thought he was, but everyone already knows that he is asexual predator. But when the two saw it, they immediately tried to reverse image search it, and even used it as clickbait in the thumbnail. <laughs> I mean, I remember seeing this when it had like 8,000 views, and hell yeah, it was fully up there, barely censored whatsoever. And anyone who's known of this drama will know that he uses the word allegedly as the biggest shield of all time. He constantly lies to get himself out of trouble, and only when he's run out of lies and in face of a serious trouble, and he's run out of options, does he reveal the truth. Then he tries to pull the LOL I said allegedly thing again. I said, as Ava alleges, I said, in my opinion. But he ended up slipping up. This is the most disgusting one by far. Well, actually, the CP was probably more disgusting. Yeah, th that's pretty bad. And then apparently reported them to the FBI. And only an hour after searching, they would come to realize that it was actually an 18-year-old version of Ivanka Trump spreading false CP allegations, which they'd come to clarify only after they received a ton of backlash. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that it was just a genuine mistake and that they didn't intentionally try to mislead the audience into thinking that it was a minor while them knowing that it was an actual adult, but saying that they say that they should be counting their absolute lucky stars that it wasn't, as if it actually was a 13 year old version of Ivanka Trump, they could have been constituted as PDFs, as they would have saved actual CP. Now I want to go into the claim that they fake videos. You can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. So this is what Dog Pack said where he alleged that they were sleeping on the production yacht when 
when in reality, just for this situation at least, it turned out that they had to stay on a crappy boat, not a quote unquote luxury production yacht. They had to stay on it because it was very dangerous and the weather was terrible at night. And I'm gonna give some blame to Mr. Beast here, as even though it was very bad weather, you did technically fake the challenge, as you did not disclaim that you were doing this. Like, I get you can't put on the video, hey, we stayed out for an hour at this time, obviously, you can't do that. But on his, like, podcasts and stuff, anytime he goes in public, part of his brand is die hard that he doesn't fake videos, and this doesn't help. So, you can make whatever you will out of this. Personally, I do think that there is a high chance of Mr. Beast faking other videos, or more videos like this, but he just simply didn't show any proof. And we cannot play guilty until proven innocent, like, for some reason the internet loves to do. Anyways, there is tons of shit you should definitely check out in his own video, which I'll leave in the pinned comment, since I will definitely not be going over everything here. But let's go on to the section where it turns out that Mr. Beast actually did do something wrong. Illegal lottery number one. Which, on my flight back, I finally found some proof that the first illegal lottery was in fact illegal. There was no no purchase necessary in the description, no mention of it at all. So yep, that's something Mr. Beast will definitely have to end up responding to. And overall, the way Mr. Beast has been responding has been absolutely atrocious. As I mentioned at the start, Mr. Beast has been completely dead silent on every social media, deleting comments, even referencing the allegations, making Mr. Beast look like some corporate evil suit, rightfully so. And also when this video did come out, Mr. Beast was DMing people on Twitter to cover the video instead of him actually making public statements. I'm not sure if this is like some legal shit or if he's simply just not allowed to speak about these issues for whatever reason, but it sure isn't a good look. Mr. Beast has done bad things, but in essence, Mr. Beast's case is like a shoplifter being accused as a mass murderer. He's done bad things, but definitely not all of this bullshit. And while for my final conclusion for Dog Pack, he is a manipulative, clout chasing sack of shit who was mad that he got fired, so then clumsily threw a bunch of false allegations to try to defame Mr. Beast. And if there is gonna be any type of lawsuit coming, it's gonna be GG's. There is no coming back from all of this dog shit that he has put up on the wall. And just for you, Dog Pack, subscribe and I'll ship 1,000 bottles of baby oil to your house. Is this an illegal lottery?